What's up everyone? Quick video today on drawing trend lines. It's one of the most basic TA tools, but I think one of the more powerful ones. And if you want to be more self-sufficient and self-reliant as a trader, if you, you're one of those people who just tries to follow calls and gets totally lost and doesn't know when to buy, etc., this is a very fundamental skill that you should put time into learning. Um, so what are trend lines? They're literally trend lines and you're joining highs and lows, well highs to highs and lows to lows to identify stuff like the trends and essentially give you other information like support, resistance, and patterns, channels and so on. So what makes a good trend line? The sort of industry standard rule is at least three touches make a valid trend line, two touches make a speculative or tentative one. Um, these touches should be spread out fairly evenly along the trend line, or at the very least not be clustered all in one place. Um, longer lines are more powerful, and as it says here, price will react more violently or forcefully to breaching them. So you know, if you have a long trend line support and we break down from it, the move down will be a lot bigger than if we had just like a small support that price has been building over one or two days, which we then broke down from. There's a comment here about bigger time frames more like to give valid lines. This doesn't mean what it means for like the other indicators and stuff I talked about. This is more sort of if you're trying to draw big picture trend lines, don't use the sort of 5, 15, 30 minute time frames for it. How do you draw them? You connect the high point with another high point, and then you extend the lines to see if in, if they if there are enough touches and everything else to meet the criteria that I talked about a couple of slides ago and then you do the same with the lows so if you do that with the highs that's your resistance and the lows with your support um, in terms of wicks or bodies I used to draw just to the I used to draw whatever it took to get as many touches as possible and now I mostly try to stick to the wicks except when there's some sort of crazy wick um, which is just getting in the way of a nice trend line, and I, I don't mind breaking a wick, especially if it's some crazy anomalous one. And as I mentioned here, these are my main time frames for drawing trend lines, one hour, four hour, daily. I'd say I use the four hour daily the most. So just some quick tips. These are zones, not magic lines. So you know, if whatever you're tracking falls a bit below or a bit above your trend line, it's not the end of the world. And it's probably not an immediate huge moon breakout either. So be patient. Um, don't force a trend line that you feel should be there. So, you know, if you have a coin that you really like and you try to draw a bullish chart, don't bend the trend line to fit whatever you want it to fit. And generally good practice, keep an eye out for trend lines that were broken. So if we do some examples here. Um, so here we've got Bitcoin. And I'm going to hop onto the four hour and show you an example of a support line. So on TradingView, this is the trend line tool. I'm going to click it. I use the second thickness. So let's click on this swing low and connect it to this swing low. Right, so here's the first step. And then I'm going to extend it to see if we can get more touches. And as you can see, that ends up working really quite nicely for us. Just clean this up. Yeah, and this is a perfect example of the criteria as well. It's a long line, which is good. Price has been respecting it ever since this move to 3K. Excellent. Touch, spread out, touch, spread out, touch, spread out, touch, spread out. Um, so, you know, it's not implausible that we set this as our target for a retrace, this trend line, and see um, what price does when we meet it. So, you know, this, this is just an example of what a support line looks like. And I think there's a resistance that we broke through yesterday on the one hour chart. Uh, yep, okay, same trend line tool. I'm going to go from this high and join it to this high. Okay, so that's my first set. I can even extend this a bit. I don't mind not being 100% accurate. And then I'm going to extend it again. Oh, nope. I'm going to extend it again. And here you see we get a really nice resistance. Let me just clean it up. Yeah, touch, touch, touch. And you see this touch eventually led to a breakout. Um, and this is a valid ceiling as well because it acts as resistance, right? We went up, 
rejected by the resistance up rejected by the resistance up rejected by the resistance up successful test and this was this uh, crazy move um, so that's an example of a valid support and resistance I drew for you um, is there an hold on I suppose there are a couple of channels on Bitcoin. Um, let me see. Okay, okay. Well, actually, if we're doing this, the obvious channel is the 2017 channel um, that we've been that we've been in and that we're testing right now. And I'll show you guys that one. So I'm going to go from this high again. This is all the same, no matter what time frame you choose. I'm going from this high, and I'm going to connect to this high. Um, but as you can see, we're already starting to get a lot of points lining up. So I'm going to go ahead and stretch it. Um, because I, well, I'm biased here because I know that this channel is a thing, but hopefully it's still helpful. Something like this. Let me clean it up. Um, yeah, that should, that, that should be all right. Um, so this is where we've been playing around. As you can see, this is perfect channel. This is a very, very long-term channel. I do want to reiterate that channels are great for day trading as well. But this is just the example that came to mind. Um, and so you see, this has been acting as a sort of moving ceiling for um, since the start of 2017, and it's been quite resilient. You know, we tested it here: big correction, test the big correction, test big correction, and now we're seeing how we do this time round. But obviously, if past patterns play out, we'd expect a correction um, if we fail to break above it once again. Um, there's another good coin for the... Yeah, I think a zero coin is good for this. So I'm on the zero coin. Should I go? Let's go to the daily. So we've done a one hour and we've done a four hour. Right, so here I'm going to draw resistance first. So I'm going to start, I like starting with high points for these things. Let's see if there's one here. Okay, I think I can go higher if I get to the very high point. And then, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so let's just um, go back and do it slowly. So a lot of the time with resistance, it can help to start at the high point. So I'm going to get to the swing high. and connect it to the first point. As you can see, this doesn't really work out. It may have been previous resistance here possibly, um, which we then broke through with this move. So I'm looking for a valid resistance, which hasn't been broken. And if I move it up to this top, you can see I already have confluence of the other one as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and stretch it out. And as you can see, it lines up very nicely. Again, it doesn't need to be a million percent perfect, but do you have some discipline with this? And this is a great resistance line. So, you know, the touch long line, and remember this is on the daily chart, this is a multi month resistance. Lots of touches spread out evenly. If we do the same for the support, and this is also an important point. People always think that support has to be sort of moving up or doing something else. Um, there is a sort of short term flaw you could draw like this or something, but again, this wouldn't be that great if I were to actually draw it. Um, I suppose this is a valid uh, support line as well. Um, there's a wick here for a test. Uh, I don't like how all of this would remain empty. Just a moment. Date range. So there's nothing between here and here. Um, this is quite a long time. I'm not a huge fan of this, but you know it's it's technically plausible. And this would be a descending triangle as well, I believe. Even though, yeah, whatever. So this is one way of doing it, but the way that I think makes more sense is if you start from this low and draw a line to this low, and as you can see, it then lines up with the rest of these. I'm going to stretch it out here as well. So this is a lot more textbook, and you know that was like 160 bars gap, and this is only well about half as much. So I, I would prefer this support line because I think it has more touches, first of all. And second of all, the gap here isn't as big, right? It tests, smaller gap, test, test, test. And as you can see here, this is also a falling wedge uh, pattern, which is a bullish reversal. So you'd expect something like this you know, to play out. Um, 
a very rough drawing, but you know, it's a bullish reversal, so towards the end, um, be a with breakouts. But anyway, the point is, um, don't always expect your support lines to be like, okay, where's the support? I'm trying to draw it up, or I'm trying to draw it horizontally. You will get a lot of supports and resistances as well, um, well resistance the other way around, but you will get supports which slope down. Um, and a lot of patterns are based on this kind of stuff, so it's worth uh, keeping an eye on. Okay, I think that's everything. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, oh, and the last thing I will say is this: a lot of this seems pretty comfortable in theory, and when you watch it in video, it makes sense. The one thing that simply helped me the most was screen time and practice, practice, practice. I would go stuff like go on Coin Market Cap or go on Bitrix. Then I would open these coins, any of them, top 50, top 100, I wouldn't care, anything that's on Bitrix, and I would just chart it on TradingView. I would, you know, I would just make a chart, pra practice drawing trend lines, just practice so many coins a day. You have no idea how many hours I put in. Um, unfortunately, to my girlfriend and degree and stuff, of just opening random stuff and going, okay, I'm going to go for the highest coins by volume, and I'm going to draw uh, this chart, this chart, this chart, etc. And once you do that enough, you will be able to open any chart, and it'll take you a lot less time to be able to figure out how you would draw it. So, you know, um, learning this stuff via video and watching videos, etc., it's all good to establish a base, but once you know the rules, um, I would suggest that screen time as practice is the best way to getting better. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. I'll see you for the next video, which will probably be on either horizontal levels, yeah, I might do horizontal levels and Fibonacci retracements and extensions. So that should be good. Cheers. I'll see you next time.